It's a little after four, so I think that we will go on and get started. Um, I want to welcome you all on behalf of the Institute for Advanced Study to this afternoon's lecture. Some of you may not be aware that the Institute for Advanced Study has existed for over 20 years and that its primary responsibility is to facilitate and encourage faculty research and creative activity. We do this a number of ways, through a series of transdisciplinary or interdisciplinary seminars, through a name lecture, but most particularly by um, a program of visiting fellows. These are individuals who are nominated by a faculty person on any of Indiana University's eight campuses to come and to collaborate or consult on a particular research issue or problem. We don't ask anything of these fellows except that they come and collaborate um, and consult with their fellow faculty persons. But we do ask that they, once while they're here, give a public lecture so that their knowledge can be shared with people outside of that sort of small group of individuals. And of course, it is that particular responsibility that brings us here this afternoon. And I'm pleased to turn things over now to my uh, history colleague, uh, Danny James, who is the sponsor of this afternoon's fellow and who will introduce it. Um, well, thank you. Uh, and thank you very much for everybody for coming. Um, it's a little difficult for me to, to say uh, nice things, good things about Mirta because if you, somebody I've known so long and so well, um, I mean, the, the obvious answer is, well, what else am I going to say um, uh, about her? But um, there are many things that could be said about her. Um, just very briefly to give you some idea of her um, background in Argentina. She is a professor of history at the University of Buenos Aires. Um, she is former head of the Department of History at the University of Buenos Aires, um, a job that uh, she didn't exactly seek, but which she, uh, only a complete masochist would seek such a job. Um, but she uh, carried it out with great uh, distinction uh, for three years. Um, she is a leading scholar of Argentine social labor and gender history. And uh, one of her other main um, areas of um, institutional expertise in the University of Buenos Aires is to have been one of the founders of the Interdisciplinary Institute for the Study of Gender in the Faculty of Philosophy and Letters in the University of Buenos Aires, the first um, serious uh, program uh, coordinating the study of gender uh, in the Argentine Academy. Um, she is also uh, the author uh, of uh, an extraordinary book on the working class community, uh, meatpacking community of Barisso called uh, La Vida en la Fabrica, um, which is uh, an in-depth social, uh, lab, uh, political, and uh, cultural history of a, uh, a meatpacking community. Um, Mirta and I have collaborated uh, for a number of years on an old, uh, a larger communal uh, study of the community of the community of Barisa. Uh, and so uh, we know one another very well. Um, one of the problems we've always had, all collaborations have problems, one of the problems we've always had in a sense is slightly different um, attitudes or towards and takes on the phenomenon of Peronism. Um, and I suppose you could say that hers has always been, as, as an Argentine, she's actually had to live through and suffer uh, some of the consequences of the phenomenon of Peronism. And so her take has always been considerably, rather, rather less benign than my take on Peronism, let's say. Um, I had the luxury of being a little bit more uh, sympathetic. So we've always had this lively discussion and debate uh, amongst ourselves about various aspects on Peronism. And one of my criticisms of, of, of Argentine academics, social historians in particular, was that they tended in the past to stop with the phenomenon of Peronism. I mean, that it was, Peronism was like this watershed event that uh, academics would prefer not to 
um, to, to really uh, engage with. Uh, Mirta certainly uh, is no, I can no longer make that criticism of, of, of Mirta. She has jumped in with her customary um, uh, aplomb into the phenomenon of Peronism, uh, in particular, uh, and most appropriately, the relationship between Peronism and issues uh, of, of gender. Uh, and so it's with great um, pleasure that I introduce her to speak on female beauty, feminine aesthetics, and ideology, the queens of labor under Peronism. Mirta. Thank you. Thank you for words. Uh, thank you to Mary Helen Brown. Thank you to Daniel James. And thank you for coming. Uh, before to present you one part of our research, I would like to thank to Center for Indiana Advanced Study and to Ivona Herinto. Uh, I also want to request your excuse because I speak and pronounce English like quite bad. Uh, but I am trying to speak I, because I would like to communicate me with more than people if I speak in Spanish. Uh, if you can understand me, uh, we will come to exchange opinions and studies. I also want to say that this research has, car has carried out with other two colleagues in, of the Interdisciplinary Institute for Gender Study of the Buenos Aires University, <coughs> Maria Damilacu and Lisa Tornay. And they go on looking for films about uh, working class beauty queen and the general archive of the nation. For this essay, uh, we analyze about 200 photographic and the Peronist press. Let me, let me show the first pictures in this session. Uh, on 1948, Nine, the Argentina newspaper Democracy published an advertisement for Manuelita, a soap made by the company Jabón Federal, Federal Soap. Ruth Sesma Romero was the winning face in this advertisement. The young woman who was born in Tucumán province had been crowned at the Sugar Cane Harvest Queen some months previously. She had also been elected as the National Working Class Beauty Queen in 1949 in a mass event held in Plaza de Mayo. Eva Perón crowned her and bestowed on her the paraphernalia that went with her royal position. Ruthma, sorry. Uh, Ruth Sesma Romero election was not the first. In 1949, a laborista newspaper organized a competition to choose the labor queen, and this competition would become incorporated into the rituals associated with the official public event of the Peronist regime between 19. Uh, 49 and 1945. The festival of May 1st, 1949 had really begun on April 30, with gathering of primary and secondary school pupils in front of the Monument of Labor. The official program of the festival included the participation of the ballet and orchestra of Colon Theatre parade of reference carriage and the selection of the beauty queen. The carriage went throughout different streets in the center of the city and they drove thousands of spectators. When the Peronist government was overthrown in 
1855, the rituals associated with the May first and the selection of the beauty queen disappear. It was not until uh, 1974 that the new contest was held, but without the ostentation and monumentality that had accompanied the contest in the past. An old Peron crowned the <coughs> queen in that year, and in the 1975, his place was taken by Isabel Martinez de Peron, his third wife, who had become president of Argentina on his death. The beauty queen of the first Peronist era had been mentioned in several scholarly pieces as part of the propaganda of the Peronist regime. However, this ritual cannot be explained simply as an element of Peronist propaganda directed at achieving political consensus, nor an indication of a brick with pass. Without any doubt, the May 1st ritual deserved to exalt the workers of the nation. But the election of the beauty queen involved also a public exhibition of the women's body that went far beyond the well-known image of the women work. In our opinion, the beauty queen seems to be part of a myth of a beauty that is defined as a natural quality, universal <coughs> and changeless, linked to the existence of an ideal woman. The ideal woman that confronts us here is distinct in many respects from the representation found in the literatures of weaker women, distorted body, spoiled beauty. Here, the ideal the ideal women were displayed in the spectacle of the festival. That was distinguished by this magnificence, by the flags, by the carriers, by the flowers. The election of the labor queen was part of a mass cult that was not articulated throughout words, but through image in a liturgy that mixed different rituals and symbols. It was a political spectacle that intertwined a formulation about female beauty with an aesthetic and ostentatious monumentalism. We have a lot of asking connected with the contested pageant. For example, what is the relationship between ritual female beauty and political action between during Peronis era? How can we analyze the variety of <coughs> images produced each year and disseminated by the press? What can they tell us about the gender relation during the first Peronis era? We will try to answer this answer question in this paper, which is in basis how you how tell you uh, before uh, on the analysis of photos uh, in the archive, uh, general archives of the nation and other published in newspaper at the Peronist Press. But before I continue to speak about ritual and labor queen, I would like to say some words about photos. Hmm? All of them uh, are what we might call testimonial photographs. The, bas the basic idea of the testimonial photograph consists on capturing the instant of the event. Hmm? It is, in effect, always a snapshot, in contrast of uh, the studio photography. The testimonial photograph cites the event which is referred to in the text that accompanies it. It is the basic photographic image found in the print media. In an international context, this Life, Life magazine uh, was noted for its use of the, the skin of photography. And in Argentina, it was profusely in the beginning of the 20th century by Caras y Caretas magazine. 
in photo, the photographer shot, uh, interrupt the event, immobilize it, and with this action, force the spectator to take a position with regard to his or her role. If these interruptions are multiplicated, the spectator position will be also multiplicated. We could say that uh, confronted with this interruption of the viewer of photography form, an image or himself or herself, and at the same time of the event registered by the image. The interruption has a function as organizer of meaning that produce their impact on a spectator. In what ways, therefore, do these photographic sorry, representation of women help to create meanings, to unconstruct identity, identity uh, under an position eh, among those who were viewing that. Ashenberger says, Ashenberger has said, the camera frees us of the weight of the memory. But public photography, on being separating from its context, becomes a dead ob object that many may be utilized in an arbitrary way. Nevertheless, photographies always produce a tension among different elements universal one, particular one, instantan ones. As a result, uh, photographers, we will argue, are <coughs> in need of what we call a privileged reader, a privileged viewer, in, uh, in, in fact, capable, capable of knowing the context and having access to other information <coughs> that distinguish universal element from fragmentary one. In this essay, we will to link the particular fragment of the beauty queen photography and the general context of the Argentina history under Peronism. Now, I would like to um, analyze the ritual of May 1st, but briefly. Uh, my first was established uh, as a working class ritual in 19, no, 19, no, 1890. Its establishment was the result of the deliberate political act and the manifestation of creating a class, the working class, through the pedagogy of the festival. It was in part a creation from above by the most organized political tendencies among the worker. With this festival, a tradition was established with sim symbols, slogans, and resources that contributed to the goal of making the multitude visible uh, as visible embodiment of the recognition that workers had achieved in the society. I cannot explain here the process of the formation of the working class ritual but I want to say that symbols and rights acquire different connotations for socialists, anarchists, and communists. The main first demonstration could be tied in respect to, respectful uh, of public order, accompanied by revolutionary hymns or tumultuous and even a violent when police intervene. In In these pictures, hmm, demonstrator with their flag, hmm, uh, among them the feminist, oh, oh, sorry, the feminist woman hmm, with um, uh, a flag, uh, two escaping from the police assault. In the other picture, you can see the socialist demonstration 
in uh, 1824. Hmm? 94. 94. No? Yeah. 19. 1924. Thank you. <laughs> Between 1890 and 1946, hmm, date of the first made celebration under Perón's government, there were many hundreds of acts in Buenos Aires and other cities throughout the country. Just a few of them have passed into history because uh, of their incidents of violence. Hmm? In front of the anarchist and socialist tradition, Peronist initiated both a break and a change in the meaning of working class ritual. Hmm? May 1st was transformed into a struggle for symbolic space and was changing until it acquired the apotheotical tone that we can register in the photograph in 1950. Look at the multitude. Huh? Perón, Evita, and the workers. May 1st in 1946 was the first president over by Perón. The main event was organized by the General Confederation of Labor, CGT, eh? and the Autonomous Trade Union, and it was supported by Partido Laborista, Labor Party maybe, which was the party that had supported the political <laughs> mobilization, mobilization which ended in the electoral victory of Perón in February in 1946. The columns of demonstrators were headed by Juan Domingo Perón, Evita, uh, Colonel Mercante, and the Secretary of Labor of, and Welfare State. This was the first time in 55 years history of May 1st that the national authority were at the head of the march together with the workers. Mm -hmm. It was also the first time in which Peron linked the day specifically to the emerging Peronist movement. May 1st, 1946, initiated a process of appropriation of the symbols and meaning associated with workers' day and the ideology that uh, in the past Initially, it was associated with the victory achieved by the people in October 17, when workers mobilized to free Perón from the jail in which he had been banished by his fellow army officer. The CGT, General Confederation of Labor, emphasized that it was a day of healthy happiness and true physical rest. May 1 was a festive day because, as a result of Peronist triumph, workers had come to embody national sentiment. In addition, the presence of Peron implied a clear break with the past, when oligarchic government repressed work and provoked violent confrontation. This yesterday, which was annou announced with war in 1946, but in 1949, was transformed into image with the publication of a pamphlet, pamphlet entitled May 1st, Yesterday and Today. Hmm? Yesterday was marked by abusive excess. Yesterday was marked by craves when the capitalists helped to divide the popular masses and invent, and invent victims to the sadistic glee of imported agitators. In contrast, the Argentina of today was the redeemed fatherland and as a result of the May 1st, no longer a date associated with the pain and misfortune, but instead with happiness. John Berger notions about uh, the arbitrary, arbitrary use that can be made up of public photography takes shape if we look at this pamphlet. Most of the photography 
belong to the same category as the ones taken by Caras y Caretas photographers in 1909. Anarchist protest on May uh, uh, 1909 had been strongly repressed by the police and for a week series of demonstration and by violent confrontation between workers and the forces on northern place uh, in the street of Buenos Aires. All photography of the pamphlets is, is uh, similar to this, eh? because this photo is about the May 1st in 1909. Eh? A photograph shows a group of people in carrying flag but on the title red flag, the commentary of the photograph say that in 1909, May 1st was the synonym of anarchy mm? and dead under the sign of the red flag. Mm? Below on the same page, there is another photography in which a dead person can be, can be seen surrounded by other four characters. In the epigraph to this photo, we found the report that bullets were used by oligarchy, oligarchy to sap the strength of the worker demonstration. There were more photographs of dead and wounded in the follow pages. The today in the pamphlet began uh, with a transcription of the right of workers and the elderly, a full page photography of Perón talking to the crowd. And uh, on another double page spread the crowd in the Plaza de Mayo, and in the following pages there are photographs of the working class beauty queen. May 1st, uh, 1947 was promoted by Peronist Press as a national festival. We also see the beginning of another meaning of the day. It will serve as an example of homage and gratitude to Perón, who has brought happiness to the people. How was the scene and the spectacle for the working class beauty queen contest? I want to point out, first, Perón's policies bound mass political propaganda and theater as particular way of occupying public space in the massive concentration associated with Peronism. Also, the main element used to draw in the masses was politics. Also, important were cultural diffusion, mass spectacle, and popular leisure activity. Politics, culture, a spectacle, and leisure were brought together in the May 1st festival. Politics was expressed in the change of meaning of the working class ritual that new formed part of Peronist identity. A spectacle acquired its force in the parade floats and the, in the scenery constructed in front of the government house. Leisure was encountered in concrete ways that appealed to, work, to workers and their families in the festival of labor. Culture acquired meaning with musical acts, dances, and the presence of artists of the official stage. Main fears also involved both classical and folk music performed by both the National, National Symphonic Orchestra and the ballet of the Cologne Theater. In the process of transforming May Fears into a spectacle, new meaning and use of existing space were assigned. For instance, in the stage uh, built in front of the government house in 1950, the General Confederation of Labor was placed in the same position as Perón. Hmm? Sorry, CGT is in the same position as Perón 
a nevíta. Hmm? But the poster hmm, uh, shows a worker who directs his body and his gaze, uh, in, gaze up into Peron's face in a position that denotes a certain subordination. The stairway, this the stairway on which the working class beauty queens from the province will take their place, in turn looks up toward the photography of the leaders of the people and toward the huge acronym of the main workers' organization, CGT. The government house and the place and the Plaza de Mayo were converted into the, the public space, the privileged public space of, for the performance of Peronist acts. However, for the May, the May First Festival, a new space was added. The headquarters of the CGT, in addition, the Beauty Queen Parade took place in Main Avenue of the city, Corrientes, 9 de Julio, Callao, Avenida de Mayo, and passed by the National Congress. The scenario for the event was therefore a broad, a broad one, though so its center was located in the Plaza de Mayo. A spectacle was also broadened. For instance, on May 1st, 1949, the act was opened with the performance of the National Inn and Canto al Trabajo, the Son of the Labor, March by the Band of the Army College. In this year and the next one, demonstra demonstrators sang the march called Los Muchachos Peronistas, the Peronist Boys. Hmm? In 1952, an artistic program was organized by the CGT, which counted of the participation of glittering figures from the theater, cinema, and radio. The songs express clearly the adherence to Perón a Evita. Capitana de mi pueblo is captain of my people. Return was again to the image of Eva Perón as the vendor, defender of the poor as a passionate woman, strong, fanatical, beautiful. The Marcha Peronista, Peronist March, emphasized Peron's condition as the indisputable leader of his people. Canto al Trabajo, Son of the Labor, written by Oscar Ivan Nisevich, expressed very clearly the ideology of a government functionary nationalists represented by the national flag in the past worker had identified themselves with the red flag, huh? the moral sense attributed to work, home as a symbol of tradition and religion has a crucial element of unity. The sense of the spectacle that oriented the festival rebels, as John Kraniowska has noted, the work of the optical unconscious of Peronis, understood as his audiovisual cinematic condition of existence as a cultural and political formation. Visual effect achieved a great impact in the parade of allegorical flow during the May 1st, 18. 48 festivity. On that occasion, there were 10 parade floats, all representing them associated with the right that were of the road of the nation of social justice. In the parade, the carriage followed the same order as the order found in the regime 10 point declaration of the right of worker. First, right to work. Two, right to just, to just retribution or salary. Three, right to an educational formation. Four, right to good work condition, right to health preservation, right to welfare, 
right to social security, right to family protection, right to economic improvement, right to defense of professional interests. The form of representation varied. The carriers that led the parade was the one that symbolized the right of the workers. Hmm? The workers, whose profile is quite similar to Perón, has a book in his hand, and there is a big hand that points forward to the future. Hmm? The first carriers represent an allegory of the right to work. Hmm? And in it, a big and vigorous uh, fist that holds a hammer as a symbol of creation, and inside part, there are male figures uh, that adopt a martial position. That is the figure. The hand is uh, reproduced in other figures and as in the number two, right, a just remuneration, where it holds the scale which support um, a balanced way money and the fruit of the labor, money and fruit of the labor. Hmm? According to Marcel Asene, the combination of fees, tool, and balance as a representation of justice and work was a commonplace in Peronist propaganda. The hand are also dominated as a symbol of, of state protection in the float that represent the family protection. There's a family in the center uh, of the hand. Female figures refer to educational formation and health care. A figure with a slight resemblance to classical figures holds a light and a book representing the knowledge needed to consolidate the notion of a powerful Argentina. The mother woman embodies the health care of the nation and the family. A muscular woman holds a child, a muscular woman call a child in her arms and accompanies the image of labor embodied in the masculine figure who, who sorry, yells a stake in the right uh, to social welfare. In other float, floats, we find, find the representation of a complex scenery with different space and planes. The spectators, according to the position they occupy, were able to observe the insecurity of working class life represented by a body that falls from uh, a skull, sorry, a scaffolding, or by a figure of person, a man, tied of a well, hmm? in a clear reference to past exploitation. The person tied to the whale is liberated by an angel. Hmm? The figure of a man who holds hammers and appears free of any chains and danger is also visible. Hmm? Look at the man tied of the whale and the figure of the angel in the, in the left, maybe in the right for you. Hmm? Uh, I am particularly interested in emphasizing the ways in which women are represented in the allegor allegorical flows. The figures don't represent a brick in the roles traditionally attributed to women, mother, protector and responsible for home and family, companion of the men. This image were linked to the formal ideology of Peronists and to the iconographic and discursive tradition 
that were formulated from the end of the 19th century and which were shared by diverse and contradictory ideological traditions, such as socialists, anarchists, and Catholicism. It's interesting to point out that women's, women's iconography during Peronism is based in, on the multiplicity of image at the home. A woman sitting in front of a sewing machine, waiting for her husband to come back from work, or saying goodbye to children when they are going to school. The projection of an unselfish and altruistic woman ready to display her effort for the others become embodied in the figure of the nurse. Hmm? This is the nurse of the Eva Peron Foundation. The main image in propaganda, posters, pamphlets, and even advertisements, short stories in cinema, was the male figure wearing overalls and representing the industrial workers, particularly the urban workers. The figure compete with the representation of the descamisado, Skirlet's one, who is the symbol of the disruptive process that the people had brought to a head on October 17. The analysis of iconographic representation about workers and the Peronists reveals that it was due of a number of available images of the past socialist and the anarchist tradition. This was selectively appropriated by Peronism, which gave a new meaning. Marcela Gené has noted that the figure of the workers is about into three versions. The descamisado, the shirtless one, as a representation of the people as a collective hero. The industrial worker as a reference to the productive, productive force and as a common man inside the family. The dominant representation was male and working class women only seeming to be embodied in the nurse figure. Nevertheless, the working class beauty queen photograph present a different iconography image than the traditional one associated with Peronis. What do this image tell us about the optical unconscious of Peronis? The spectacle provoke an intense mobilization, mobilization of the public. The photograph of uh, 19, sorry, of uh, 40A, the second or the third, I don't remember now, this. Hmm? are eloquent in respect to the presence of the multitude, uh, the lot of people uh, around the scenery. People surround the carriers, put obstacles to their path, and wanted to see the Argentine beauties. The police had to <laughs> intervene in order to prevent the crowd from slowing down all the program activities. The Queen election involved a large process, process in which end the most beautiful woman was chosen. First, uh, as a province of regional working class representative, and second, as a national queen of May First Act. Who were the queens? How were they chosen? Which were their desire, desires and aspirations? The process of election was modified with the years. In the beginning, they always were young women. Remember, power. So. The young women. Ruth all was um, 15 years old. Hmm?
who generally work as employee in any service enterprise, official, official office or trade union office. Women who work in industries or workshop uh, were few. Also, several trade unions choose their queen each May first. However, one of the national queens was represented of the several job trade unions of the province Eva Perón. The queens then were young women in their age between 15 and 20, and for the national festival, they arrived from towns and city of the inside of the country. The beautiful, the beautiful women occupy an important place in the station of the fiesta. I need uh, one minute. What happened? For what? Yes, sorry. The technology. Uh, I need one minute for to show you the picture with the working class beauty queen. Here. Hmm? <laughs> and Entonces, the beautiful, the beautiful women occupy an important place in the station of the fiesta. This is a stair eh, in front of the government house. Hmm? The gestures were pompous. In 1949, after the parade of the allegorical carriage, book sounds indicated that the crowd be silent. And at this moment, the arrival of the floats bearing the regional beauty queen was announced. When the carriage arrived at the large stairway, several pages, I don't know what's said in English, pages, went ahead and preceded pages one, the, the boys, hmm? um, went ahead and preceded them to the places that had been reserved for them. Once the coronation ceremony was over, the ballet of the Colon Theatre enacted a symbolic parade of working class women, and when Perón talked it to the crowd, he said, Compañeros, may this be the festival for excellence of the Argentina people. For this reason, the government that is pure people inaugurated this festival under the auspices of the Descansados. It inaugurated this fiesta made joyous by an adorned by the presence of Argentine, Argentine womanhood, who synthesized we must look for in the beauty queen who represent the many types of work in the Republic. The festival was adorned by the beauty of the Argentina women, and she was the living image of happiness. The young women in whom the intensity of the gaze, the innocence of the smile, or the darkness of the hair stood out represented an image of ideal womanhood. Creole beauty, woman as symbol, full of grace and harmony, these are the expression that definite the woman choose as beauty queen. In the process of election of the queens, the ideal of feminine beauty as Peronist ideology are strongly joined and surrounded by the notion of harmony so prevalent during this period. This notion extends its reach over the real group. The women, like the floats, the parade, throughout different streets of the city center were a group of harmony, color, and beauty. Through the public display of the beauty of work, working class women and ideological operation was performed that the set 
emotion and idea concerning the requirement of female beauty and the dignity of labor. Working class uh, beauty queens are presented as the living image of dignified work that is a long way from the humiliating work of the past and from the labor that deforms women and her children popular, popular by literature. The figure of the queen of labor embodies the perfect combination of quality associated with working women and beautiful women, qualities that for decay had been seen as incompatible, as, as separated. Those who were elected could come from any job or activity, agrarian activity, civil servant, dressmaker, member of the Argentine Union of Artists and Variety, or the Trade Union of Telephone Workers. Any job was worthy and deserved public respect, but the indispensable condition for election as a working class beauty queen was physical beauty. Hmm? It was physical beauty that allowed her to be transformed into a faithful exponent of the industriousness and beauty so unquestionable part of Argentine uh, womanhood. To become an women who work for the greatness of the nation. In this way, the queen's two qualities, industriousness and beauty, were joining and extending to all the female inhabitants of the country. In order to understand the meaning of the process of gener generalization, it is imperative to analyze both the ideal and the beauty criteria required of women during the parents' years. And also, it's necessary to know who were those who bestowed legitimacy on those qualities. In the competition, an all-male jury, the exception was the figure of Eva Perón, consecrated the women queen. The authority voices were those of the CGT general um, Confederation of Labor, Secretary, other trade unions leader, and Juan Domingo Perón, the president of the nation. And just one occasion in 1948, Monsignor Copelo, the Cardinal Bishop of Buenos Aires, also took part of the jury. The fact that the competition was organized by the uh, CGT and that it was part of the festivities surrounding May 1st probably determine who will be the candidates. They had to be working women and come from relatively humble families. Humbleness, beauty, godness are the necessary condition and we can add another to be a good parents. If the qualities of being a working woman on of the relatively humble origin were the necessary condition for the young women's participation during the first period of the competition. During the last year, physical beauty will become more important. In general, the members of the jury didn't vote as a member of the any trade union, but as men. The representative of the forces of labor in Argentina didn't have to, the, to be the most working class vote, but the most beautiful. This election was part of the process of the dignification of the work through the display of beauty. The public image of the beauty, beautiful working woman was something new, but not exceptional. In other countries, like Chile and Brazil, Beauty queens were elected, and in fact, Chile's beauty queen was present on the official stage in 1951. The photograph of candidate, candidate and beauty queen reveals certain qualities as most important. The photograph, the photographer, A, is held by the look the eyes, it lingers of the smile, 
and the hair, the journalists carry out the readers toward the face of the select each year and emphasize again their eyes, which were generally dark, but always deep and shimmering, the dark hair, the clean smile. Reference to the body and the clothes, clothes are not common. Also, some journalists have commented of the softness in their way of wake, waking. The image is repetitive and stereotyped. They are like the girls of the mass circulation magazine and of the weekly sentimental fiction. In her analysis of the weekly novel, Beatrice Arlo has pointed out that the semiotic of the body, its literary and graphic representation, give us a social, social image worked on by aesthetic and ideology. The social image of the body has privileged some, especially mainful songs which are toned down in the chiaroscuro of the relative importance and others are simply erased for the collective erotic imagination. This semiotic web uh, traces the lines of possibility of the relationship <coughs> between sex. Hands of photography operate inside this semiotic where the eyes become the basis of a solid female beauty. They are the messenger, me, messenger of those things that can't be put into words. There are other aspects of beauty that are possibility valued. The lips, the smile, a mole, and on them it focuses a strong charge of erotic attraction. Uh, um, in the photograph, uh, present the, the royal attribute as the real is the GR. I forgot. <laughs> this is the attribute, the real attribute, but this is the GR, uh, the uh, CGT. Hmm? And insert, receive a certain quantity of money, uh, much of it was returned by the Queen's to Eva Peron Foundation. And the beauty queen received shiny jewelry that made them most uh, beautiful. Uh, the beauty queens were the focal point of all gazes, the gaze of the jury, the gaze of the spectators, the gaze of the journalists. They were glorified and admired for their simplicity, their beauty, and their desire to become wives and mothers. In general, all the beauty queens said that they wanted to get married, have a home and many children, for the glory of this homeland and Perón. They all say that they were preparing for their live as why. The working class beauty queen aspiration are the same, to get married, to have children, to be an efficient housewife, to do this thing, they study crafts, domestic economy, learn how to sew, cook, and clean the house. Within this repetitive discourse, that the press disseminate, we can observe some indication expressive of the tension between what is said and what is desired. In two newspaper articles published in 1951, we can see the tension suggested by the image of the young woman who maneuvered to become visible when uh, uh, during contest in 19, 
or 49. Eva Perón is in the front. The newspaper text that accompany the photographs complement the narratives. There is an uncertain of air of sentimentalism, of text that produce happiness. Huh? The natural, accessible beauty of the queen and the moral virtue will allow the war, other working women to experience the same dream of the chosen, crowned by Evita and Perón, and applauded by spectators. This recognition uh, um, also involved giving interview, visiting government house, newspaper, on Trade Union and offices of Fundation Eva Perón. Besides, faced with the privation associated with the material condition of life of the working, the working class royalty may be possibly uh, to dream of traveling and the possibility to know other geography. The beauty queen, queens were photographed when they arrived in Buenos Aires, hmm? traveling around the city. In the international airport of Ezeiza, in all of these cases, the image emphasized smile, beautiful, natural, modern faces. Throughout the photograph, a general consensus of the importance of natural beauty was achieved. For the Peronist regime, the exhibition of natural beauty allowed the revelation and dignification of female work because it didn't humiliate women and instead guaranteed her the public recognition. For males, members of the jury as well as spectator, the natural beauty of the choosing one served to identify them as the owner of the value good while for women, the queen's accessible beauty, far from the model of femme fatale, they could easily identify not only with the contestant, but also with the dream world nourished by popular literature. On another level, those women were like Eva Perón. They reproduce in certain way her experience, bringing up to date the story of a humble young woman that became the queen of her people. And as replicas of this person, they too love their home, Peron, and the poor. The year uh, 1851 was marked by the domination of language of efficiencies in production and in work in general. Women and men sought to achieve records in production. In order to make a reality of the image associated with produ production, efficiency, organization, and modernization, two photographs are significant in this sense. In 1951, the regional working class queen visit a textile plant and encourage the young women workers in the production effort. In the same years, Perón and Evita received in the presidential palace the women workers from different strata unions that had achieved exceptional production records. The young women sit uh, in front of her sewing machine represent a traditional image of women. At the same time, that embodies a modern woman. She wears fashionable and uh, clothes and combines in harmonious way the ribbon of her hair with the cloth of her, her ski, skirt. Skier and the ribbon of her hair. The visual 
culture of Peronists is ambiguous. On the one hand, it fixed traditional roles uh, in a rigid way, and on the other hand, it democratized them when it produced on large scale, make them visible for the public. It promotes the confinement of women in the placid <coughs> world of home, and at the same time, it pushed women to occupy public space. It could be said that the process of women's self-affirmation remained in constant tension, particularly women belonging to popular classes, as well as reformulating their subordination. Women, even Eva Perón, are glorified, but glory is not <coughs> enough to democratize the power. The clearest, the clear image of the construction of this ambiguous language can be found in two photographs. In <coughs> 1949, the national queen had over the throne two key symbols associated with the Peronists. The closest fist here, <coughs> the closest fist, the year over the closest fist, and the, um, the beauty queen over all. Hmm? The multitude in the street was characteristic sign of the epoch and it's also present in the figure, in this figure, in this picture. Hmm? In 1951, this year, the vigorous <laughs> workers huh, who achieved record level of production also took part in the parade. In fact, they were the authentic representative of work and power. I will finish in <coughs> two or three minutes. The military cop in 1955 marked the end of the working class festival and the beauty contest. The Peronist party and militants were persecuted by the new military government. The festival had abruptly finished. But in 1973, after several decades of political instability and prohibition of hope and the frustration, Peronists returned to the power. However, the country had changed greatly and culture of rebellion was widespread. In addition, young women and men, rather than workers, had taken over the street when Peron returned to the country. The tension between Peron <coughs> attempts to reestablish the past of the Peronist and revolutionary Peronist dream of using the same tradition to form a leftist group erupt at various past step. Uh, I will only say that the organization of May Field celebration was tense because uh, the May in 1974, because both groups sought to prevail. Also, I can't Detail, detail here this tragic process. I want to say that there was a clear intent to recreate the spectacle. Antonio Carrizo, a renowned radio performer, presents the actress and singer Susana Rinaldi, who performed a poem. In the Plaza de Mayo, the tension grew with the arrival of the columns of the Peronist youth. Different groups fought, fought a battle of slogans. Faced with a spectacle that was developing in front of the main stage, the slogan, we don't want carnival, we want a popular assembly, expressed the opposition of the scene. In a reduced pass, several young women awaited the election of the working class beauty queen. When Perón arrived in helicopter to the plaza, 14 minutes the youngster showed to many a slogan and the vice president Isabel Perón crowned Maria Cristina Fernandez, representative of the Trade Unions of Pobra Sanitaria, as the working class queen in 1974. The break within Peronis was inevitable. The 
General National Archive doesn't preserve the photographs of the plaza. The only photograph we could find shows Isabel Martinez de Perón giving her certificate to the working class beauty queen in 1975. This election was different because it was carried out in the TV studios of Channel 7 and it was transmitted by TV Network. Um, the jury was different. Maria Fernanda, a specialist in fashion. Maria Amalia, ex Miss Argentina and Miss Universe. The singer, Alberto Marco. The dressmaker, Vittorio. And the beauty consultant, Norma Palkowski, integrated the jury. Hmm? Ah. I would like to end this talk by pointing out that in 1949, a pamphlet of the Peronistra de Union, Associated of Railroad Workers, encouraged workers to reflect on the meaning the May first. They listed in the pamphlet all the benefits gained by workers under Peron, better salaries and working conditions. <coughs> more power for worker and the union, and the election of the working class beauty queen. According to the union, the beauty queen contest was part of the change that had been produced in Argentina with the arrival of Perón to the government. They represent the success of the new government and the installation of an era of happiness for workers. Nevertheless, it was not the only meaning attached to the repetitive festive ritual and the glorification of women beauty. The beauty queen contest formed part of the optical and conscious of Peronism. They were part of the visual spectacle that oriented the festival and that gave form to the cultural and political experience where women <coughs> occupy a preponderant place. In this cultural and political formation, the visual definition of femininity that we have traced throughout photographs involve, uh, involve a notion of beauty, grace, and harmony, understood, understood sorry, as the result of a natural gift. The beauty of the women was publicly exhibited in order to dignify work and displaced it in open confrontation with the past image where female work not only humiliated women, but with source, it's also the form, friend, uh, then and growth, then of the possibility of produce visual pleasure. The working class queen contest may be interpreted as a way of glorifying women, but the cultural and political formation of Peronis is full of ambiguity and the visual domination project by photos of a passive female subject, humble and the times trivial, was also a way legitimizing male, pow male power. The spectacle adorned with female beauty can be interpreted as an expression of mass culture, thus, as Andrea Hussein has not identified this culture with women, instead, of an authentic and real culture that continue to be identified as male prerogative. It is also risky to analyze the male first ritual and the Peronist as an expression imposed from above. The analysis of the photographic image may lead us in this direction, but as Andrea Hussein recognizes, quoting Esport Hall, the hiding subject in the mass culture debat debate is the mass it's fine, it's political and cultural aspiration, and also it's integration through cultural institutions. Women were part of the masses. They knock off the door of a culture dominated by men, but their voices are still unclear. The photo <laughs> provides only partial access to the tension that women experience in the context of the political ritual. The world that we have taken from the press. Temptation, impossibility, borders are a sign of the possible contradiction between the way in which women look at, themsel at themselves and the way they were looked 
uh, by the others. The end of the first Peronist regime in 1955 brought the end of the beauty queens, but not the end of the transformation li linked to the female image, to the changes in gender relations, and to the modification between the public, the public and the private. The shortage of preserved image and the um, National General Archive about the working class queen contest in 1974 and 75 is surprising and we can to try to make some inference. One, on the one hand, it's possible to think in terms of the impossibility of Peronists bring up to date the meaning of a spectacle based on the glorification of female beauty of the period 1948 and 55 because of the internal confrontation between the youth group, the leaders of the trade unions, and the Perón. The new political forces of the left that had developed inside and outside of Peronismo marked the limits of the effort to restore the meaning of the past. But it was not only this. This new left developed within its own limits and contradictions, and at the same time, new challenges and possibilities present themselves to one. Thank you for your patience.